It's time for the Teed Off Podcast. Okay, it is episode 21 of the Teed Off Podcast. I'm Ben Clyburn, and I'm here with my co-host Aaron Thomas. Aaron, how's it going, man? Good, Ben. How you doing today? Another beautiful fall day. Happy October. October golf is my favorite yeah, type of golf. It's my favorite time of the year. It mm-hmm. really is. Uh, it's still warm enough to go to the beach, but... As far as golf weather goes, it doesn't get any better in Myrtle Beach than October. I just had an outdoor lunch earlier. It was perfect outside. Awesome. Yeah. We are joined today by AJ Gohill, VP of Sales and Business Development of East Coast Golf Group. They are famous for the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, nearly 30 premium courses in the Myrtle Beach area. AJ, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. You've been here before, but nobody's seen your face because we weren't doing uh, filming. You didn't have no cameras. The cameras everywhere now. We had to have you back, and we appreciate you coming back and can't wait to talk about a bunch of uh, new things going on at the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. That's going to be exciting. Very exciting. Let's go over the agenda of the show today. So World of Golf, President's Cup recap, that was an awesome display Mm -hmm. of golf and passion, and we'll look ahead to another international event next year, uh, Beth Page, the Ryder Cup. Then we'll make the turn. It'll all be about AJ Gohill and East Coast Golf and the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. And we'll talk about some recent news and maybe even drop a new package on the scene. We'll see about that. And then we'll hit the back nine and we'll have a spring rounds update with MB Golf and in Myrtle Beach, an accommodation of the episode. And then last but certainly not least, what tees us off. You guys ready to jump in? We're ready. ready. Let's do it. The Front Nine. Okay, the Front Nine. President's Cup is over, 18 and a half to an 11 mm-hmm. and a half victory for the American team. It was rather interesting, though, that 5 and 0 for the first session, only to be flipped with another 5 and 0 the other way for the second session, definitely added some, some drama to the President's Cup, which I think is, is needed. But then it was really America the rest of the way. I want to get you guys' basic thoughts you know, on the tournament and if there's anything of note you want to mention. I mean, I like the chippiness that was shown. I mean, it seemed like there was a lot of back and forth yeah. between the two teams, which you generally don't see in the President's nope. Cup. Ryder Cup, for sure. Mm-hmm. But I felt like, and I don't know, I, to me, the President's Cup has always been like the the secondary of the two events. I think everybody gets fired sure. up for the Ryder Cup. And I I, I will admit I didn't watch it from beginning to end because we are in college football season. So I did a lot of channel flipping last, you know, over that weekend. But I really enjoyed it. The the intensity that was there from both sides was fun. Of course, the the five, you know, the sweep of what it was and it was the afternoon rounds, I think it was on for fr- on Friday, Friday by the international squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it it set it up to to be a competitive weekend because I mean, the U.S. team has pretty much owned this for how long now? What are they, 10, 10 straight? Yeah. 10 years. So yeah. 10, yeah, the last 10. So, uh, but it was it was enjoyable to watch. Um, I think we got a preview of what we're going to see as we'll get into later, talking Ryder Cup, coming yeah. from the captain and things like that. But I I liked it. It was a good way for me to, you know, end the golf season pretty much. So Yeah, I mean, it's a global game. So mm-hmm. I see why the President's Cup is around so yeah. that you get – some international players that aren't European involved in an, in an event like the Ryder Cup. And it's been entertaining to some degree, but it's usually been a blowout. And although the score here is, you know, a pretty wide margin, it was a lot more entertaining than previous President's Cups. Don't you think, AJ? Yes. I, I love what Keegan did. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. did he did a fabulous job. I mean, he, cl- he clinched it. I mean, he worked hard. Well, he, let's he, talk about him because you want to talk about an 18 month span mm-hmm. of just one end to the other. So probably the saddest part on full swing I've seen so far is of Keegan Bradley being left off of yes. the Ryder cup squad for 2023 after having an incredible year, comeback player of the year level performance last year on tour to be left off the squad. I think it wasn't fair that he was left off the squad I think it was a buddy system thing with, with Zach Johnson, and mm-hmm. I think we ended up paying for it. But maybe that backfired. Maybe that's why he had such a drive. I mean, he was. Oh, he, he has. He's he has always drive. had a drive. He's, yeah. he's um, he loves the Ryder Cup. Yeah. yeah. But he has continued his his good performance into twenty twenty four. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, has gotten the Ryder Cup captaincy, 
and was an assistant captain for the President's Cup. Played mm-hmm. so well, yeah. he became a playing assistant captain and then clinched the final point. And I just, you got to take a step back and tip your cap to Keegan Bradley. Mm-hmm. And I think it is, you know, building a lot of momentum emotionally for Beth Page in 2025. So oh, yeah. I, I think that is, is great for him. And you want to talk about emotional leadership and playing. You know, in, in years past, you know, Anthony Kim had that amazing Ryder Cup mm-hmm. where he was playing his tail off and uh, the emotional leader, Patrick Reed, mm-hmm. has done that with a couple Ryder Cups and has gotten the term Captain America. I think after these last two international events, the the last Ryder Cup, he was probably the only glimmer of hope for that last Ryder Cup and now playing so well in this Ryder Cup. We got to talk about Patrick Cantlay. Is he the next Captain America in yeah. your mind, Aaron? I, well, I'm sure if we go back and listen to any of the teed off, especially when we've talked Ryder Cup before, I'm a huge fan of his, especially in this format. Yeah. He always seems to show up. And he's done well in all the Ryder Cups. So I think he is their go-to guy. Like he's he is the one, like when they need a point, he's gonna grind it out. And I I'm a big fan. So he I I'm actually looking at right now. So I pulled this up because I just wanted to see. I did some uh, research on the golf channel, did a they gave grades for all the players. So A pluses went to Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley. Yeah. They, they were considered the two tops for the team on the weekend. Let's talk about that pair, too. I mm-hmm. mean, because in previous international events, it's been Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth, both whose games are just not there consistently mm-hmm. the last few years. Well, Xander and Patrick surely are. Yeah. I think that they're going to be people that are going to carry us into Beth Page next year mm-hmm. that should play every session. And I expect them to compete and win a lot of points. I think it also shows the because he the last Ryder Cup there was the deal with Patrick Cantley and the hat and wanting to get paid and yeah. this and that. I think it I think it kind of solidified that he put that to rest and he's just you know he even just, if he didn't put it to rest. And AJ, I'll, I'll throw this question to you. So so Patrick Reed is a good example for me on tour pretty universally disliked (laughs) yeah you know and he's not known for being an extreme emotional guy he can be whiny Mm -hmm. and then you get him on an international setting or representing his country and it's just this whole different persona and i don't know if he's just it's what it is i feel the same way about patrick cantley i mean he is not a big rah-rah guy no on uh on the pga tour he's he's dislike for his slow play then you get him on the stage here at the Ryder cup and now at the president's cup it's just totally different aj why do you think that is you know it's it's the Ryder cup it's 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 patriotism i think people just want to be part of something yeah. right yeah you're now playing for your country or you're playing for europe you know whatever you're playing for and you want it to feel like everybody's in this together yeah and i think that's what they portray i think in their heart they're, they're not just playing for themselves there's so many people wanting them to win. And I love it when, when they get the crowd involved because the crowd being involved just makes it such an amazing atmosphere. Yeah. And it just levels it up. You know, golf is great. Golf is fun. You, there's times when you've got to be quiet and there's times when you have to have the rah-rah. Yeah. That's when you're playing the Ryder Cup. And you, it's the team aspect. I yeah. mean, you don't want to you don't want to let your teammate down. Right. You know, if you if you don't get the point and that's right. You know, you're you're not helping your team. So which uh, is different than the tour because yeah. it's such an individual sport. Yes. And the crowd is such a different a different vibe. And you are going to get plenty of crowd reaction in New York and oh, Beth yeah. Page oh, in 25. Yeah. Even I thought the crowds for the President's Cup were a little more rowdy than usual, too. I think you so, know? too. It, it felt like it this year anyway, yeah. so what what I saw. When Scotty and Tom Kim were going at it, <laughs> I mean, the crowd was eating it alive. I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. it I, and I don't know who the, the sports commentator was. This was, fr- I think it was Friday evening or Saturday morning. I was kind of reading up on it because I didn't see it live. So I just, I caught it like, you know, like most people probably on, on X or whatever. And it might've been on the golf channel, but somebody said about Tom Kim arguing with Scotty Sheffley and said, you, you really want to piss off the number one player in the world when you're playing against him? <laughs> yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was what he said on live, on live TV. And I was like, 
That makes sense. Good point. But it was nice to Play see on. that. I liked the chippiness, though. I, yeah. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the international team, I think, only won three matches after their big blowout Friday morning, which Matsuyama beat Scotty as the only singles to lose. I wouldn't want to be ticking off uh, Scotty Scheffler for anything after what he's done the last couple of years. Yeah, we, uh, and it's funny because I forget who I was even having. It was one of my friends I was having a conversation with, and we we're just talking about like his, his whole year has just been unreal. Yeah. I mean, from, from the wins to the arrest, to, yeah, I mean, yeah. everything. Yeah. It's like, what a year the guy's had. Yeah. You know? He's the people's guy, I think. Yeah. I just yeah. love, I just, I love to watch him. Play golf. And everybody likes it. I think everybody yeah. likes that. Yeah. I, I saw a stat this morning. He's been the world number one for 90 weeks now, which mm-hmm. is very impressive. Only 13 more years of being number one, he'll catch Tiger Woods. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a long way to go. <laughs> That's a lot to ask of somebody. <laughs> that, is, that is playing golf at a very high level that, for a long time. That, it's still, that's a stat that. It's just you, it's unbelievable. Yeah. One, one of many. So I saw that this morning. I had to throw that in there. If, if Scotty gets half of that, uh, that he is, he's probably gone way past what Mount anybody's Rushmore. ever thought. Yeah. Yeah. He does half of it. Yeah. Which, um, it's it's got to be, I mean, it's, it's beyond difficult. But there's know. so much, there's so much, uh, the level of play, it's so much better, right? The technology is there. So it's, it's hard for him to do what Tiger did. Yeah. No matter how good Tiger was and how good Scotty is. He's just up against more competition, I think. It's true. I yes mean, the and tour, no, because a lot of great players are playing elsewhere at this, the moment. This is true. But I think you could put them on the course these past couple of years, and it wouldn't have made much of a difference at his level of play. His ball striking has been insane, yeah. and his putting has only been a tick above it's average. Crazy. And okay. I will yes, say but this. Did, you hear, did you hear about his putting? He knows every single back backswing on his putter. It's much he, better than it's been. Knows. This much means this much that way. You know, he just he's really worked it hard. The striking resemblance, at least for me, that when if you're comparing Scheffler and Tiger Woods, is Scheffler's recovery shots are they're just like remember Tiger Woods used to get himself in some awful spots. He never hit a fair way. And hit hit the greatest <laughs> shots out yeah. of the junk you would ever yeah. see. When Scheffler gets himself into a bad position. He hits a great recovery shot, yeah, and that's that's part of it. I mean, you're not he's not beating himself, so yeah. We'll we'll see. You know the the season's gonna go a little dormant now, yeah, until next year. I know there's gonna be some tournaments between now and then, but it's it's gonna be pretty quiet. Let's see if he does it again. Can he keep this performance up? Because it's it's almost an unreal pace. I think yeah. he can do it. I think he's got that drive. It's something inside him that I, I see it on TV yeah. when I see him play. I think he can do it. Oh, I, it's yeah. it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think if anybody can do it, he's got he's got the demeanor. You yeah. know, he doesn't seem to let a whole and he lot has bother the him. swing. He didn't let an arrest bother him. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah exactly. He, he's got the exactly. swing, <laughs> which is you know like his he's got that weird follow through, but that's all after he hits the ball. Whereas you know. Streaky players like Justin Thomas and Bubba Watson, who have had their moments mm-hmm. of being some of the best in the world, that swing leaves them. Mm-hmm. They they can't keep that consistent because they have so much activity going with their feet during the swing and through the swing that I think that's a, a big reason why they are not they don't they're not as consistent. That's my problem. Yeah, <laughs> my feet. <laughs> that's one of mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all, mine's a long list. Yeah. But. but you know, Scotty, when he he has that weird finish, it's after he hits the ball. Everything until he hits the ball is just pure and 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 very. It, he just he duplicates and replicates it. Mm-hmm. So well, and the knock on him was always putting. He, yeah, he couldn't putt. And now that he now he's that he practiced, puts. he's done. He's got his own routine. I, I was I heard that last time he played. He's got a routine on his putting. Yeah. If you say it's six feet, he knows how many inches to go back now. <laughs> I got to figure that one out myself. But. I've I've never figured out a putting routine. That's my problem. So <laughs> the hole gets smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> for me. So I think that's that's the problem. I would like to, uh, while we're still yeah. discussing PGA yeah. Tour, I'm not sure if you had seen it yet though, but I saw a snippet this morning that Jay Monahan is going to be playing golf with the with the Osser of the, at the Dunhill. Yeah. Um, I guess they're playing in a group together or something like that. I don't know how significant that is to getting a deal done, but I figured it might be worth dropping in on while we're talking. Well, about let's it drop it in. So <laughs> I, I've I've got some notes on that, and I will go out of turn and do my teed off right Uh-oh, now. Oh, okay. 
So, yeah, oh. they are playing together at the Dunhill Links at St. Andrews, which is great. They've had some New York meetings in recent weeks. And uh, my teed off is I don't care anymore. Okay. Uh-oh. So you've got two funding mechanisms that control billions of dollars that can't find a deal. One of the most recent hangups are the money that the players are getting and want to give some money back and can't figure out rev share for players. You know, live may have endless funds. Mm-hmm. They have a crap product that nobody watches and nobody's going to watch. And right now they're not getting world golf rankings. So the players are screwed. The PGA Tour has got more money than we think. Oh, yeah. Money. Magically wave a wand in the last two years. The purses have gone up 40%. Where'd that money come from? Mm -hmm. It's all about money. It's not about the product on the course. It's not about the people watching it. I don't care anymore. I don't want to hear about Yasser and Jay Monahan doing stuff and meeting stuff. You you give me a call when they get the deal done <laughs> and the players get back. Other than that, I don't care. I put it in a category of how is Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift doing? <laughs> yeah. I don't care anymore. Yeah, exactly. He's fired up. Yeah, yeah. He's fired so, up. I, I, fired did, up. I did not know I was going to get <laughs> that up. out of him when I said <laughs> so it. That, so that's my teed off for, okay. for this. So that that's how I feel teed about it. Teed off on the PGA yeah, Tour. Yeah. So, <laughs> and live. <laughs> um, and you know what? It could be because it's college football season. Yeah. And, and the season is going dormant. If you ask me this question in April. Yeah, and right. it could change, it could change because yeah. you're going to have some guys that are going to be left out of the Masters. Well, yeah, we start talking majors again and so. get excited in the golf bug, you know. But for the time being, it's just another headline to me that's has not proved Waste born any fruit. Well, the PGA Championship did announce that they were going to be allowing live players yes. in, so yep. I'm sure the other majors are going to kind of follow suit. But well, that's good. Yeah, so I think they know they at least we to. could see them four times a year. Yeah, so it's. I mean, it's take it take it where you can get it right now, I guess. So. Yeah, I don't fault the players for going after money. I don't fault the players that are staying loyal to the tour. I don't think the fight should be over their money. No. Yeah, the fight is uh, the fact that that was an issue really teed me off. And it's billionaires battling with billionaires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right. the only losers, because the, all the players are getting paid more or have the opportunity to get paid more, are us. Yeah. I've, yeah. I, and I, I do agree with you. Like, I've become immune to money, 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 money. Yep. Because it's all we hear about it. As yes, sports right. fans, it's all we hear about. The kid from college sports, UNLV. UNLV. Just left because he didn't get his hundred thousand dollars or whatever. He left his player, you know, his teammates and stuff like that. And, it's, uh, you know, there's parts of that that I understand because he could have been promised stuff. Yeah. And there's coaches that promise players things in the college level and then they leave to, to go take more money somewhere else. And I don't I don't have an answer for it right now. The, the horses are out of the barn with, with money. It needs to be regulated. How? I don't know. But I just know that it's killing sports. Yeah, it, it And you see sports. something like the President's Cup where they're not getting paid. And there's passion and stuff like that. We're getting further and further away from that, guys. So I'm going to say something. I don't know if this is uh, uh, correct for the show, but you've got police officers. You've got people serving us that get paid just enough to live. Mm -hmm. And we've got people in sports making silly money, Mm -hmm. crazy money. And now they're complaining about a few million here and a few million there. That's something is wrong. The the average fan suffers for all of it. Yeah, we yeah. have to pay, right? The yeah. hot dog costs you twenty bucks. Yeah, the beer costs you twenty bucks. The, the ticket, take, yeah. the ticket alone for whatever event you go to. Yeah, and it should be the other way. You take your family, take the kids, go watch golf, go watch the you know baseball. Mm-hmm. This is all getting crazy. I'm fine with with athlete, athletes getting paid. I mean, yeah. the college sports I'm thing. Okay yeah, that's a whole it. other yeah. thing. But yeah. Everything's about money now, and yeah. it's just I'm so desensitized to it, and I see the headlines and stuff like that. I just yeah, it's it. and I'm I'm the same way because uh, you know whether it's Sports Center or whatever whatever show I'm watching, it's like as soon as the talk turns to money, it's like you just kind of zone out. You don't yeah. even pay attention yep. to it, which is which is sad. I mean, it is sad, yeah, because I love sports, yeah. all of them. I'm knowledgeable enough about every sport to be dangerous, yeah. and I love. Them. I see that. I see I'll that. talk about. I'll talk about every every sport that. you want to. It's so it just it hurts because it's it's different even than when I was a kid. Yeah, I don't see a a, a way up. No, it's uh, if anything, it's only going to dig deeper. Yep. Uh, is I think is going to be the problem. But 
Well, let's wrap up the front nine and move to something a lot happier yeah. and a lot and a lot better, which would be AJ and East Coast Golf okay. and the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. You ready to jump into making the turn? Let's do it. Let's do it. Planning an unforgettable Myrtle Beach golf getaway has never been easier with mbgolf.com. At mbgolf.com, we give you the power of choice in pairing world-class golf with premium options from golf course villas to oceanfront condominiums brought to you by Condo World, the leaders in Myrtle Beach luxury travel. Make your next stay and play journey to the golf capital of the world, the experience of a lifetime. It's all just a call or a click away. Making the turn. Okay, making the turn. We're here with AJ Gohill, VP of Sales and Business Development of East Coast Golf Management. They're famous for the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, yes. 29 premium courses in the Myrtle Beach area. AJ, you are a veteran of the Myrtle Beach golf scene. Every guest that comes on, I ask them two questions. One, how did you get into the sport of golf? And then two, how did you turn golf into a profession in Myrtle Beach? So veteran means I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I didn't know golf. I, I, was, I grew up in England, born in 68. So as I'm growing up, golf was for the rich and famous. You know, I saw a putt-putt, par three type of thing one time and, and, and played it. You rented two clubs and you went. That was all I knew. Fast forward, I get here 30 years ago, we're in business, sold the businesses after a few years, and then I got involved in a job. It was just a job. Hey, I want to try this. There's a maintenance job down the road. I'll do it part-time, see, see what it's all about. Well, that six-month part-time job turned into 30, 33-year career in golf in Myrtle Beach. Love it. So I didn't know anything about golf. I'll tell you a quick story about how much I knew about golf. I was doing maintenance. They said, you know, you got promoted. You're going to go set the uh, course up, make the holes, you know, pin placement, Long Bay Club, number six. Mm -hmm. It's got the green where it's got like, I don't know. It's just, it's it's deep, right? The gully, I call it. I put it right in the middle. <laughs> I didn't know. Nobody told me. So then from there, I, the superintendent is screaming. The pro was screaming at him. Who the hell did that? Yeah. So they find me. I'm like, what did I do? So were the golfers. Yeah, so were the golfers. Like, like, what did, who did that? I said, hey, I, it seems interesting. There you go. Again, Superintendent's I wasn't revenge. Yeah, exactly, right? So so that's how much knew, I knew about golf. I thought everybody in uniform, like everybody had the logo shirt. They must be employees. I didn't know. People actually bought logoed stuff from golf courses because they wanted to go back and show it off so so it was never the, the the game that got me into it but now that i've been around it i call myself the, and he knows he's we he's, we played golf quite a bit aaron and i mm -hmm. i'm the professional hacker okay i say that because i suck at golf now i didn't realize i sucked even more 20 something years ago when i started playing golf you know but I just love it. You know, you're out there, you're out there four and a half hours, five hours with some buddies, you know, having a couple of cocktails. But now it's like, I got to go play golf. I get paid to play golf. I get paid to show off my golf courses. So, so it wasn't the golf that got me in. It was just making a stream of income that ended up being a career. Extremely interesting because we have a lot of pros, local pros on that it's always, I play golf in high school or I play mm -hmm. golf in college and then I would vacation here and, you know, no better place to have a job in golf than in Myrtle Beach and so on and so forth. But you, you did it. You, you had a job to pay the bills yes. and ended up falling in love with the game at the same time. Exactly. It was just, you know, life takes you in different directions. If, if, if you had told me when I was a little boy in England that I was going to be part of this huge, great management, golf management company. I'd say you must be talking about somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, but here I am, you know, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and you make lifelong friends like both of you guys. I've yeah. known you guys yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And I, uh, I was just a kid when I started in the yeah. business and AJ is one of the first people I met. So yeah, I remember I used to go down to see him at, at the hotel and he was a young kid. He was in college. I thought he was still in college, but apparently he's somehow he switched it into a real, real job. And yeah. uh, ever since we we try to get together at least, unfortunately for him, I try to get him out at least once a month. Like, come on, Aaron, let's go play. So he has to put up with my, am I doing this right? What do I need Vastly to do? Vastly improved over the years, though, yeah. AJ. Hey, I will give you that credit. Is, one, socially, 
golf's incomparable for mm-hmm. sport. It's, it's the most socially fun and great sport. But also, you know, whether you're a hacker or not, mm-hmm. you're never going to dunk a basketball like LeBron James. That's but right. you could hit a shot tomorrow yes. that Tiger Woods couldn't match. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that, to me, is that ultimate equalizer for golf. And you can do it until you're 70, 80, 90 years old mm-hmm. and still pull off shots like that. And that's what why I love the game so much because you can be the best in the world for a brief moment. For that brief moment. Mm-hmm. I have one. I have a story. So we were playing. Uh, it was a group of us playing Captain Choice, my favorite game, Captain's Choice, because that <laughs> way you can let the pro hit that long and you know play up sure. 77 yards out. Sand wedge. Man, I've never seen anything like it. I hit the pole, flag stick, and it went boom in the hole. I'm looking, and everyone's like, you don't have your camera out. I said, how can I have my camera out? I'm taking the shot because normally I have the cameras out. You know that. So Or the selfie stick. Yeah, selfie stick. So I, I had it on Facebook within 30 seconds. It was go. on Facebook. But that feeling that I had, that's what keeps golf. You chase what it makes, forever. It, exactly. It's like I haven't had a hole in one yet. I don't know what I will do if I get a hole in one. You will get one. I, yeah. I hope so. I've got one. <laughs> well, you uh-huh. got to buy drinks for everybody. So, well, that day I was buying <laughs> drinks for everybody because we were entertaining everybody in the yeah. industry. We had we had an outing at the golf course. So it would have been good that day. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, have you got a hole in one? No, no, uh, no hole in one for wow. me. No, nope. I've been close uh, yeah. many times, but never, no, never got. I mean, I've, I'm talking like I've been right on the cup, but no. So we played in the first tee a few Sundays ago. First yeah. tee tournament. <laughs> He was on fire. I'm telling anybody out here that needs to play with the, you know a few bets, don't bet against Aaron. He was on fire. I mean, I'm surprised that you did haven't had a hole in one. No, I do, these I things do not. Were close. You were hitting it. I have I have my moments. That was I, good. That was actually though, because I, I did actually I put forth a little effort that day because we were doing the first tee. Yeah. So obviously you want to show the kids, you know, sure. the right right. Yeah, we had a junior with us. Yeah, so I was I was probably a little more serious about my golf game that day than usual, but <laughs> most days there's not a lot of cares for me. So, well, we were molding the young minds yeah, of the golf he community. Was. He, he, so. he got to be a good influence. <laughs> he was. He was. He was giving the youngster <laughs> tips after the first after six holes. Uh, no, nah, I don't. Not, not, you not many tips, tips. Not many tips. So he, I don't. I don't thankful. need to be ruining someone's golf game. <laughs> Aaron is our resident player here at NB <laughs> Golf. So you know, if you want to book a package or you know book a lesson, you can. <laughs> no, no, no lessons. I'll talk. I'll talk golf with you all day, but uh, lessons I'll stay away from. Well, AJ, t- tell us about East Coast Golf Group, and then we'll jump into the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. But tell us about your position there. What do you do? And, you know, y'all's philosophy at East Coast Golf. So East Coast Golf Company, Golf Course Management, if we look at who's who are the people that put this company together, Mike Busserone, Rob Mosser, Chris Hendrick, and myself, I always joke that if we if we add the years of golf management experience – It's like 150 years and all of us, we're guys that have worked every single level in the golf industry. You know, we've worked backdrop. I've actually been a beverage cart attendant for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've done it all. So, so our philosophy is, is we've been there. We've done that. We want to use our skills to help ownership. People that own the golf courses, give them the best market share possible. We want all of our employees to, to succeed in the golf industry. You know, if you want to be a PGA professional, we have the guys that will make it successful for you. We will put all the tools necessary to make sure that you are, that you are a success. If that's what you want to be, we just got some management contracts. So we've got a lot of employees now, which is new to us. We now manage international club. Watch us so East. We've always managed. Sea Trail, three golf courses, convention center, townhouses, vacation. So much going on there. So Mm -hmm. much. So we're managing them courses, River's Edge. So we, what we, I merged with East Coast Golf six years ago. Can I go back a little bit to how that happened? Yeah. So, and and this is funny because I was sitting there with, 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 at, at Condor World when you were across the street. After 22 and a half years, the company I worked for, Myrtle Beach National, was bought out by another company. No big deal. It happens. And this was three weeks into the deal, new ownership. And uh, I used to stop at Condor World all the time, once a week. You know, in them days, there was a lot of stops you could go and see people. But ask me, what's going on, AJ? How you doing? How's everything with the, with the new company? I said, I'm not sure. We're still figuring it out. So I got the email, email to say, you're out. 
That was a Thursday. And your team told me at that time, and Aaron was somewhere else, and he told me, I had about 10 people in the industry. I said, wherever you go, we'll take care of you. Monday morning, I had my own golf marketing company. So that was worldwide golf marketing. Mm -hmm. And all of my friends in the industry, whatever courses I, I was promoting, marketing, they were supporting. So I, that, you know, I would grow my company, and, and I thank them very much for that. So that worked out. So that was my other, you know, out of Myrtle Beach National, I'm doing the same thing, relationships, making sure that your golf directors have all the tools they need to sell and create more business and bring it to town. That was, I'm the conduit. That's what they called me, right? Golf courses to the vacation companies. So I did that six years. Me and Mike Bruce were on friends for 25, 30 years. Same with Rob Moss. So Chris Hendrick had just come into town four or five years prior. And we worked together with the National Golf Management, which was part of Myrtle Beach National. So Boos is like, okay, we got to get together. So we all got together. And I said, hey, my baby, your baby, let's just keep one baby together. And that's how I ended up being part of East Coast Golf six years ago, six years in June. And I'm looking forward to seeing where we go. We, we, you know, we are the underdogs, I used to call myself six years ago when I got that email, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not. We are the guys that are now going to help the, the next generation and just keep the golf world capital of the world mm -hmm. going in the right direction. So that's, that's where we are now. I'm like proud to say we've got an amazing golf management company. We market our golf courses in the Grand Strand, golf capital of the world, as the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. Mm -hmm. And Coincidentally, that concept was brought up while you were on your own. I think I was in on that conversation yeah, yeah. that the, the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, just the concept, the idea of it was brought up just during, a, I think, a lunch meeting lunch, lunch. one day. So, so again, and then it just took off from there. Well, yeah. my friends were helping me. I was like, okay, you know, I, I've never worked for anybody, but one company since I moved here, I was always in business. And I did businesses while I do all of this. Some people call me a serial entrepreneur, but you know, <laughs> I just I just can't stay still. So I'd say, hey, what do you think? I mean, I'm talking to Jim Wodring, mm -hmm. okay, a, a great mentor of mine, and to many in the industry. And I'm asking Jim, and I'm asking Aaron, and I'm asking you know, a couple. But he, he, Aaron was like, yeah, Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, because Jim says to me, why don't you do Myrtle Beach Golf Trail? I was going to do Grand Strand Golf Trail. He's like, do Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. Well. Somebody owned the website, so I'm just like, you know, this is where the lid of of leadership. I wasn't there, right? Just like McDonald's, you know, he had two or three restaurants and now it's the, the biggest real estate company in the world because he had partners that helped him. So Aaron was part of that. Rob Mosser, you know, as I'm now with East Coast Golf, we talk about it. Next thing I know, they've done their magic and boom, we got the trademarks, we got the name, everything is go. So that's what I love about working together as a group. So East Coast Golf is family, you know, just like the rest, like Aaron is part of my family, you're part of the family. This Grand Strand area, the golf capital of the world, we do business. Compet competitors compete, but they, they help one another. Mm -hmm. I don't think any other area has that. Definitely a tight-knit community. Yeah. We yeah. discussed that. I believe that was with the Salty Golfer. We yep. were talking about just the, the area when the golf community pulls together for mm -hmm. any cause. They, they seem to really... Yeah. Do a fantastic job. Well, it's such a unique destination. Mm -hmm. You know, one volume of courses yeah. and, and volume of good courses in such a small area is is rare. But to be such a tight knit group, you, you really can't go to a golfing event and not rub shoulders with somebody that you go way back with. Exactly. And I, I think that's a testament to the people involved and look at the product that it's creating. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. And talking about product, you know, since COVID, our golf courses, I can speak for the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail courses, they've elevated the quality of the courses, yeah. spent mm -hmm. hundreds, if not millions of dollars. So so that's good. You know, it, it, we're, we're stepping up our game. It just keeps getting better. I definitely think so. I, I think, and I've spoken to this on multiple episodes, there's before the bookends of the courses, the top of the line, and then mm -hmm. the most economical, there's a pretty big disparity. That is really tightened up now. Mm -hmm product of play no matter which course you choose is 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 really a great experience for for it the is. end user and that's a testament to what you guys are doing and not just the yeah. course the facilities yeah 
Everybody is putting money into their facilities. It's, uh, I mean, with Sea Trail. Yeah, you mentioned Sea Trail. So we had Corey Bowers on. Yeah. Oh yeah, good um, Corey. He's uh, the the pro yes. at Sea Trail, and he was dropping some knowledge on us on the millions of dollars mm-hmm. that Sea Trail is is putting into uh, not only their golf courses but the surrounding areas. You know, convention center, multiple restaurants and bars, hotels coming accommodations have been completely renovated it's gonna be a golfing destination Destination. aj i know that you hosted with the myrtle beach golf trail a a big provider outing out there and aaron you went and it was uh, a bunch of fun and uh just could you give us an update on what is going on out there at sea trail since uh, we had Corey? sure sure so so much is going on it's crazy i i was going there every 10 days and I do a little video to update everybody that couldn't get out there. And I'm like, what What are you guys doing? I mean, just the, the, the quality, the convention center. You walk in there and you think you're at some grand casino. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's just beautiful, right? Big rooms. They've got restaurants, 55 Bistro. You walk in there and it's, it's a sports bar. You've got different games you can play. You've got pool. But it's very fancy, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not like a you know, bar. But it's a it, fancy it's place. Upscale. Very, yeah. It's upscale. Upscale, upscale is the best upscale term is for the road. it. Yeah. And the bar itself, whatever you want, they've got professional people that can make different types of mocktails and cocktails. I can right? confirm yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, mean, the, I mean, you know, they've got chefs, like not one chef, but they got chefs that can do five-star dining and whining. Mm-hmm. And that's just the convention center bar, 55 Bistro. Now, and it's 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 – there's a prime steakhouse mm-hmm. in the club Sun- sunset prime sunset yeah. prime sunset prime imagine walking into the to the for whoever's been there before it's different we gutted everything out there's a restaurant the bar itself has 50 seats around the bar yeah and, aaron mentioned you know it's the bar has got this great view of the 18 holes and yes. it rivals that of you know pinehurst yeah, yeah. so yes. it, it reminds me of the cradle because you can sit there and watch the golfers coming in and then and they've also got a great outdoor bar yes. that you can sit and do the same thing and it's uh i mean it, it's impressive i was i was fortunate enough to i went with aj this was a while back when they were just starting the renovations so i got to see like kind of the the groundbreaking of it and then to go back a couple Lots weeks of ago groundbreaking. and see, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> literally. And to see what has come from that is, is very impressive. They've done an excellent job. The investment on the courses too. Oh I yeah. Mean, yeah. So the a, bird is being, being redone as we speak. It should be opening up real soon. Uh, uh, if it hasn't yeah. already opened. I, I think by the time we air yeah, this Yeah, we're show. October 2nd. I believe they are. Yeah. yeah. New greens, trees down where they've overgrown. So there's more air and wind and, you know, the grass is going to be beautiful. It's almost like the project was a, a, like a dream for anybody that wants to be in the golf industry. It was a product that had great bones, needed a lot of money and a lot of talent, mm-hmm. and everything was given to us. The tools were given to us as a management company, and it's probably going to be talked about once it's completely finished. You know, the hotel's done in a few years, and 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 you know, there's t- brand new townhouses by the way, twenty seven mm-hmm. brand new townhouses that we stayed in. Yeah. So, so you can stay there, play there, eat there. You don't have to go anywhere. Now, obviously, we want them to stay with you down here too. <laughs> we can shuttle them up there too. You know, you know, spend the day, spend two days, whatever you want to do. But, but the the they, they've got a pizza. I'm celiac, so I have to be careful where I eat. I love the pizza there. It's a cauliflower pizza. I know mm-hmm. it's 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 cooked in a special oven. So that's my selfish reason for going there every 10 days, you know. <laughs> there you go. But, but, yeah. but brand Taste new townhouses, what, let's see, there's so much. Uh, the, the Sunset Cove. Yeah. Sunset Cove. It was an area below the clubhouse. Years ago, it was used maybe as a halfway house. It had been like a shed for stuff. I saw it one day. It was a mess. 10 days later, it's like a high-end little snack bar you yeah. go in there and you can actually buy gloves in there golf balls in there underwear 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 under, right <laughs> i mean you know what in the world happened on the front <laughs> now <laughs> so it's a, they're, they're thinking about the golfer you know if you want to go upstairs and grab a drink fine you want to go down here grab a drink you know it's just it's amazing and and going back to people spending money prestrick has done so much out mm-hmm. there over the last year international club is getting ready to open up the clubhouse another I'm going to call it, I don't know, a, a new look, high-tech sports bar 
type mm-hmm. of you know club. Well, you've been posting a lot of a lot of it on uh, I see on uh, social media, yes. and it's I I've seen I know what the original product was there. It doesn't even look yeah remotely the same. It's unreal. So everybody thought I was really going for pizzas, right? My pizzas, <laughs> but I was like, you got to get there because you got to touch it, feel it, just like a real estate agent would talk about. I understood what they meant because mm-hmm. when Pictures I said don't do it justice, it, it doesn't do it justice. And when they sat there at a 55 bistro and everybody's having a f- great time after their round of golf, you know, that everyone's happy and it, the energy, you know, the food's amazing. The drinks are amazing, but the energy of the employees and, and the members out there, they, they'll make, they'll welcome anybody that's on a, on a golf vacation. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to feel like, wow, I'm a member for the day. This is great. You know? So that's why I go. It's not because there's the pizza. I just have to let these guys feel it. <laughs> well, thank you for the update on on Sea Trail. I mean, that is really product that is unique to the Myrtle Beach area. And then you've touched on other courses that are making upgrades. So l- let's let's drop a new package Ooh. into the mix here with the premium collection of courses that the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail has. I have a, a nice bag here that you've uh, brought that yes. will come off this microphone after the show and go in my <laughs> golf bag. And below it says Trailblazer. So, it, it AJ, does. tell us about the Trailblazer package with Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. I sure will. So, you know, we took we took all our friends in the golf industry, the golf providers, golf directors like Aaron, for a two-day trip. We normally, you know, take them out of the area just so that we have them for two days. They can't go back home and can't do anything. So we just, we said, let's do it at Sea Trail. Three years ago, we launched a package that was huge. You know, we, after listening to golf directors and getting the feedback, we, what do your customers want? We said, we got to do something. While we got them at Sea Trail, let's do something. So some of our team members talked to the vendors, TaylorMade, and said, we want to do something with you. You know, let's do a package. So the package is called the Trail Blazer, Right. You're blazing down the trail. You're traveling the trail. These are on this nice pouch here. Hopefully everybody can see it. it says Trailblazer. It tells you the golf courses that are all involved. And basically you book two or more rounds because who wants to come here for one day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to play at least three to five rounds of golf when you get here. But two, two or more. So you could play five on this as long as there's a minimum of two. On your first day at the golf course, after Aaron's done the bookings for you, the uh, staff – in the pro shop will give you this bag so you can put all your goodies in there okay and then you get a sleeve of these golf balls and there's there's a nice logo in there mm-hmm. i think you forgot yours didn't you i did yeah <laughs> let me see that i, I know the logo but <laughs> yeah? it is a good logo i think this is aaron's bag because i found one because i didn't have one for myself <laughs> i think i left it behind right? by accident so uh, so you get they get a sleeve of this i mean how nice is that hey mr smith thanks for coming today welcome to the you know trail Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, you're playing the Trailblazer package. I've got a gift for you. There's there's your sleeve of balls just in case you have a bad round in your first round. And don't forget the range balls. If the facility has a range, the range balls are complimentary today. And we also have lunch and two drinks. Wow. Covered. Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Smith, if you feel like playing more golf today, we can book you your replay at a special price. It's actually just a replay rate, which mm-hmm. is like nothing. So just benefit after benefit after benefit. And and we hope to add more to this. But right now, I think this is a great added value. Aaron's the expert. Mm-hmm. Like, is this something your customers will like? We've listened to you and other golf directors and wanted to give you something that was added value without costing them anything, right? Everybody mm-hmm. can pretend to add value. But this is great value. I mean, you've got tailor-made golf balls. You know, add it up, the lunches, the drinks. The range balls. The range yeah, balls. Yeah, right? I mean, it's. I think the the two key words that that you come away with are added value. Yeah, that is what every golfer is looking for. The the people we talk to, they it's that added value, and that that offers some of the best added value of any packages that that are out there. So I love the welcome gift. That's, oh, yeah. that's unique, and and that can, like you said, this is a great start. That can vary. I mean, so yeah. I, I I love that that. There's a lot of cool stuff that could fit in that bag. So, exactly. in my defense, yeah. 
that just shows I didn't need golf balls that weekend. Yeah, so I played, there you go. I played pretty well. So if I would have come, uh, <laughs> I would have had the bag, but an empty box. <laughs> yeah, my box would have been gone. Too. Yeah, <laughs> you could put a bottle of Crown in here too. I yeah, think. There's, Aaron, there's, what do you think? I've got a lot of ideas for go. that for that bag. <laughs> what a value add there! <laughs> <laughs> but no, the Trailblazer uh, package, uh, I imagine, is going to be very popular with our golf packages made on mbgolf.com. Aaron, when will that uh, Trailblazer package be available? So it is available for our spring groups. It is starting in March of this year. I believe 1st of March, if I'm correct. March the 1st so, is yeah. the first day of play. We already had people, because they wouldn't listen to me, because you know they had a few too many. Or maybe I bought them too many drinks. And they're trying to book it for February. The day after we got back the trip, I'm like, dude, it's March the 1st. Hold you. I said, thank you. Yeah, you can, you can book it now, yeah. but you just can't play. The, the play begins March the 1st. March, so okay. you can feel free. Give us a call. We can book it for you. Just it, it's got to be for spring play. Because so. think about it, we have to order all these golf balls. So there's yep. going to be a ton of golf balls. We've got to make all these bags. We've got to be ready for it. So logistically, sure. that's why we picked March. Of it. We'd love to have them come early, but we just can't get everything ready in time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. So it, it's it's going to be a great package. I think people are going to have a good time with it, and it's it's great golf courses. You know, you, you know, from North Myrtle Beach, from your condos, they can you know go for ten minutes either. 20 minutes either direction, mm-hmm. sorry, <laughs> either direction and, you know, boom. And the the food and beverage options. I mean, I know from experience the, you know, the courses that are involved there, their food and beverage are, are fantastic. Yeah, full restaurants, each, guys. Each I mean, this isn't, yeah. this isn't a snack bar. I mean, this is real, oh, yeah. Yeah. real food while you're playing and that's great. Yeah. And of course, the beverages that goes without saying. So. Exactly. Well, you gotta, I, you gotta I, stay hydrated. I think we have a stipulation here for Aaron. Let's see. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. I, I saw the Aaron. asterisks. I saw the asterisks on it when I was looking at the package. I was like, "There's a reason why there's an asterisk there." It says beer, not crown. <laughs> well, the Trailblazer package and all of the packages offered by Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, you are almost guaranteed to have a great time because right. of the product that is put out there. AJ, thank you so much for joining us to, you know, give us a scoop on your story on how you became a uh, a veteran yes. in the Myrtle oh, Beach golf industry, a superstar in the Myrtle Beach thank golf you. industry. And uh, we appreciate your friendship and glad you joined us today. Would you mind sticking around while we jump on the back nine and talk a little more about Myrtle Beach golf? Sure, sure. Let's you do got it. Me. All right. The back nine. Okay, the back nine. So we were listening about the Trailblazer package, Mm -hmm. amongst other packages that the Myrtle Beach Golf Trail offers. At nbgolf.com, we've got every package you can imagine for every course down here. Aaron, how is spring 2025 looking? Still booking. Yep. Yeah, we haven't, haven't let up. The bookings have stayed strong, I'm sure. I know we talked numbers the last time, but we're still on that same pace. So spring, spring tea times are booking and booking fast. And we're so. pacing ahead. Yeah. Book now. I'm a broken record. Book, yeah. now. <laughs> Book now. Book now. Because by the time we get to, you know, next month, December, and you're like, oh, it is time to plan my golf vacation. Yeah, you'll you'll get some tea times, but they're probably not going to be the the time of the day you're looking for, or you know things like that. So there's there's going to be a lot less availability. Yeah. MBGolf.com is a great resource to look at packages and see what the offerings are, like the Trailblazer, but also look at tea time availability. So it updates live, and you can see what tea times are available and which days and courses and time periods are filling up. Yeah. And then we have got uh, an online chat feature and a phone number uh, to call to talk to a golf expert. Um, We're all here in North Myrtle Beach. Aaron and his team are ready to help you book your next getaway and golf package to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that is just always just perpetually popular to stay in North Myrtle Beach, Aaron, is the Crescent Shores right outside my window here in Crescent Beach on the oceanfront in North Myrtle Beach. It's got some of the largest two-bedroom, three-bedroom, and four-bedroom oceanfront condos in all of Myrtle Beach. Yeah, four-bedroom, three-bath, and four-bedroom, four-bath. Yep, so with great options, bedding yeah. options. You know, they sleep up to 16 people and a lot of beds, and it's just fully equipped kitchens, private balconies, huge floor plans, designer furnishings, AJ. The, the golfers just love the Crescent Shores, and Aaron, they're... 
they're filling up fast. They are, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, one thing to say is location, location, location. Yeah. It's in a prime spot of town. It's not far from, uh, you know, any golf course, so no matter which direction you want to go. Central to restaurants, great restaurants in the North Myrtle Beach area. Yeah. So, uh, you know, bars, if you want to go out and get a drink. That's what evening. I was pointing at. I was pointing I, at the it bar. It is next door to an Irish <laughs> pub, yeah. too. Yeah. So I was pointing yeah. at the bar. If you bar. don't want to drive. Yeah. Yep. So let me ask you a question. So when you say sleep 16, that's vacationers. How about golfers? I know there's a there's a different setup. There, there are golfers. plenty of bed options. Okay. So typically the four bedrooms will have six beds. The so general setup is uh, two kings, four queens. Okay. So the bedding, regardless, uh, and we know that's a big deal for our golf groups yep. because – Small beds aren't necessarily, no. you know, a fond thing for golf groups. So that's that's one of the main reasons Crescent Shores is is one of our more popular properties because the bedding is right. is what the golf groups are looking for. Cool. So you typically would do if you want to do six golfers to a four bedroom, you could, or you could do five to a three. You know, just based on the bedding, some do have a little different bedding schematics, right. but we we work that out amongst the golf groups and what they need. You know, give them the options that work best for them. So, because as you get older, you want a little bit more space. Yeah, yeah. the old days when you had a little tiny bed and you're six foot two and yep. the bed's only like four foot. Long. I've <laughs> I've gotten to my my spot in life. If I do a golf trip with my friends, which will be coming up on my teed off. I, I need my own room. <laughs> yeah. Well, at Crescent Shores, you can get that done. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people request that and re- request options so that they yes. have their own beds, their own bedrooms, or even their own bathrooms. Yeah. So the Crescent Shores is definitely an accommodation you want to keep high on your list when you're planning your next golf trip with mbgolf.com. Well, Aaron, you mentioned teed off. <laughs> so last part of the show, AJ, we, we talk about something that may – grind our gears about the game of golf or a personal story we have about the business of golf i'm not teed off at all today you already got that you got that out (laughs) mine's already gone don't start that don't start yeah yeah. (laughs) so i have taken the 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 last 45 minutes or so to calm down so i would like to hear about y'all's teed offs aaron what tees you off well and i don't know so much tees me off but it uh it's just a it's more of a comical story i recently did a golf trip with some friends and we we had caddies and had a great time. It's uh, and I I won't say where we were, you know what we did. I want to don't want to incriminate my caddy because uh-huh. he was one of the best caddies, quite honestly, I ever had. I've had a few few rounds where I played with caddies, and this guy was phenomenal. So I don't want to don't want anybody to think he teed me off by any means. But we had some drinks, had a good time, and don't think too much about it. Left the next day. And I don't even look at my golf clubs for a week and go to play my first round of golf and reach into my bag. And I'm like, I think I'm a club short. I don't have a six iron. So my, my six iron was missing. And I reached out to my buddies said, Hey, any chance, uh, you know, maybe a club got put in your bag. No, no, no. I don't even think they bothered to look at the time. It was just, nah, no, no. So I reached out to the caddy and poor guy, he checked. He's like, nothing in lost and found this and that. Only to find out that my six iron had made its way back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> it was in your buddy's bag. It was in my buddy's bag. Yeah. It was how in the world does that happen? I'm not sure. It was uh Uh-oh. there were there were plenty of plenty of drinks that day. And we had a great time. I mean, it was just just friends having a good time. I'm sure it wasn't me. But I know, I think it was just one of those, it was the last hole of the day and you're scrambling, you know, you're coming in, they're trying to get stuff put away. And I think it just got placed. And I I mean, I had a good laugh about it because I I even chalked it up. I told my buddy, I was like, I said, because I had such a good time. I was just going to consider it a, a, a six iron sacrifice for a good cause. Yeah. And that was, and leave it at that. But that luckily it was found in one of my buddy's bags. They were playing in a charity tournament. I think the week after I asked him and somebody happened to be looking through and said, uh, I don't play tailor made. And I was thinking maybe you were greenside somewhere and you had done a bump and run with your six iron and one of your buddies picked it up and put it in their bag themselves or something. No. And I'll be honest. I think yeah, and it, <laughs> I'll, put my hand up. I'll tell you that in a minute. Coincidentally, <laughs> he had one of my clubs a while back, but no, I think what it was, I actually hit a six iron on the last hole. Because um, we actually played the the back nine first, okay, and so it was a par three was our finishing hole number nine, 
And I, if I recall, I did hit a six iron and I think I was carrying it with me up to the green. I think the caddy picked it up, but probably we're all up there just, you know, Everybody. thought he put it in your bag but he did yeah and it was just yeah. one of those things so i i'm because i'm positive i laid it down I sh i'm sure i didn't put it in the bag because if i would i, I would have known my golf bag yeah. but like i said we were having drinks that day so i'm not going to place the blame on anybody but my six iron has been through a couple states and i haven't haven't touched it in weeks so. <laughs> there you go <laughs> well that's 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 an interesting one. I I wouldn't say you were teed off, but it was no. certainly interesting. No, I like I said, <laughs> I was willing to chalk it up to a six iron sacrifice for for what was a great golf trip with friends. So cool. So I got to tell you what happened to his club. Why? How did they get in my bag? <laughs> is this a bonus teed this off? Is a bonus? No, this is a bonus. Like I didn't mean to do it. So so I lost my seven iron. About I don't know. It must maybe it must be a, a a full moon out there. But I lost mine six, eight weeks ago. And I said, Aaron, did you did you see my club? He said, nope, nope. So I called everybody. Nope, I haven't found it. My seven iron. We play golf during the first tee tournament. And he calls me like four days later. He said, hey, by any chance you got my wedge or something in your bag? So you wouldn't have to pick up my sand wedge, would you? And I I'm had having, it, I I'm had having it. a club month. Yeah, <laughs> I had it in there. I said, I don't know. I, mean, I was picking up clubs for you, man. I don't know. So anyway, that, I thought that was mine. So my teed off. Okay. What, what teased me off? I, you know, I don't really get teed off. I'm just that kind of guy. I'll just brush it off and it's okay. But I had to think of something that teased me off at times is, you know, I wine and dine people all the time. I take them to the golf courses. And then sometimes somebody invites somebody, right? So somebody that it's important to me, somebody I like, their guest. So now, you know, you you got the carts go to the right, get off, get off the fairways. And here they are right up, up to the green. VIP. Uh, yeah, they think they're VIP because they're playing with me. And I'm like, dude, that's the worst thing you can do is when you're playing with me, it's got to be straight and narrow, 100%, you know? So I kind of tell the guy nicely, hey, you know, guys, you got to watch out for these signs. You know, they ignore it. They ignore it. And now I feel like I'm the personal ranger. I'm fuming and it's ruined my game. I can't take mm -hmm. care of the guests that I want to take care of because this guy thinks his, you know, it's his golf course that he owns and is maintaining. And I almost want to call the pro shop and say, hey, guys, get out here and give this guy hell. <laughs> yeah, but I'm you like, be the bad guy. Yeah, I'll be the bad guy. But I just let it go. But they, they forget. They think people that disrespect the signs and the courses is what tees me off. There's a reason for it. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. are. And I, I couldn't agree more. Nothing irritates me more than seeing somebody drive a cart right up to the green. I, handicap, I, I completely yes. get it. Yep. I understand all that. But, yep. but somebody willing and able – Yep. And you drive it right up to the green. Oh, it just yeah. irritates it's me. It's either entitlement or, or laziness. Yeah. Um, I think you know, so. outside of handicap. It's just I think it's just being rude, yeah. arrogant, arrogant, entitled. And and then, you know, I've had owners that have said to me, if there's somebody disabled and it's rained, do what you can to make sure they have the best experience. Yep. Yeah. Right. And that person has respected and done the best they can, walked an extra 10 steps that they shouldn't have yeah. to respect the course. But these guys are like, oh, yeah, yippee, let's go. Let's, you know, throw in cigarette butts. I mean, this, oh, all of this that stuff. That was my teed off last, <laughs> was it? last okay. episode. I mean, was the cigarette butts and the cigar butts. Uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's come on, guys. To treat it, leave it better than you found it, yep. right? That's why yeah. we repair tool. You there's, know, I mean, golden rule, man. There's yeah. a trash can on every hole. Yeah. You know. Yeah, some, somebody posted something the other day about a trash can that was overflowing. People were just dumping outside the trash can. Come on, guys. <laughs> Leave it in Wait till the next hole. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So. That's what teased me up. People that don't follow the signs. They're there for a reason. Exactly. And it's, and it's there to make the experience better for everybody. Exactly. It's not there to make your experience worse. That's right. Great teed off. It was a great <laughs> episode. AJ Gohill, VP of Sales and Business Development of East Coast Golf Group. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Aaron, it was another great episode. Episode 22. Oh, Hopefully yeah. I'll have my six iron back. All right. <laughs> Happy fall. Everyone, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Teed Off. Visit mbgolf.com and follow us on Instagram at Teed Off Podcast for the latest episodes and news.